Welcome to the webinar CEO Realize the Hidden Cause of Slow Growth. Does it feel like something needs to be done in your company, that it cannot continue like this, that the new path must be found? It has probably been pondered, discussed and attempted to solve the problem for a long time, but the gap between the current and target states still exists. It would be great to know what is causing the problem and what needs to be changed. The objective of this webinar is to consider the hidden causes of slow growth. Can new opportunities be found if the perspective is broadened a bit? We are all prisoners of our own beliefs. They have developed over the years through our success. It's like water flowing through sand. The longer it flows, the deeper the channel becomes, it ultimately forms a deep belief canyon, a grand canyon. Standing at its bottom, I have stood there, you are quite sure that the only direction to proceed is there, as we don't want to go back. The rock wall is high, a mile high on both sides. But what if we rose higher? Would we see opportunities? How could we remove the blinders and get new thought hates in the company to accelerate growth? This webinar is for you, the CEO, who is considering accelerating growth. The webinar is divided in two parts. In the first part, I will discuss the main obstacles to growth, and in the second part, if it's okay for you, I will explain how we can help you work through your thoughts. I'm not selling anything in this webinar, but I suggest only a one hour of sparring discussion without commitment, with the idea that you always learn something. You can then continue on your own or ask for our help in the way you need. When you have booked the sparring meeting through the link below, I will send you the webinar slides. So, if we haven't met yet, I'm Marcus Westerlund. I have helped companies find growth and profitability for over 25 years through strategy work. I have my 110th strategy process underway and my partners have facilitated over 100 more processes. There have also been a large number of implementation projects. Each process is unique. All have brought lessons on what to do and what doesn't work. It has been especially fun to notice how people get excited when they can find out why things are not working in their case with the help of tough questions. When you do several of these processes, you inevitably get an idea of what is worth investigating and what is not. Now I will tell you a few key things we have learned and what new opportunity could open the knot. The company is a living organic entity and therefore there are always pain points that manifest symptoms. A typical symptom can be slow growth. The CEO sees the symptom and understand the company's challenge. The symptom could, for example, be that sales are not picking up. And there is, of course, a reason for that. Management forms an understanding or remedy of what needs to be done, such as accelerating sales, having more customer meetings, or using CRM better. However, for some reason, this remedy does not always eliminate the symptom. The understanding doesn't work and you get stuck in a loop. Underneath there may be a hidden cause that management does not necessarily see clearly or has not yet been able to work on. It could be the offering. It is simply not competitive. The competitor has a better one. Lowering the price is not possible or does not even help. Or it could be a matter of not knowing how to listen to the customer and understand their real needs. Instead, we love to sell the feature of our products, making a product dump that doesn't directly hit the customer's core need. Customer needs may have changed. When the hidden cause is understood, targeted actions can be taken. 
Only by understanding the secret cause and implementing the right solutions can the symptom be eliminated. A bit like a visit to the doctor. The patient has a symptom and may have an idea of what they need, but a good doctor is skilled and experienced. The professional has a different opinion and provides the right treatment based on his extensive experience. There was a hidden cause beneath and now the patient has received the right treatment. So, what is the hidden cause in your company? You probably already have some thoughts. My experience is that behind one cause there is often another and behind that yet another. Only when you find the hidden root cause does the solution start to emerge. Not an easy task. And you also had to get your entire team involved in the exploration. The new opportunity to improve the situation is obviously to identify the hidden cause and then create a corrective plan. Unfortunately, most corrective measures for hidden causes are not quickly implementable, but require determination, perseverance and especially time. In practice, this means that it's about updating the strategy. The word strategy has acquired a bad reputation in many contexts. Some believe it is just light talk, management nonsense. But, of course, it doesn't have to be that way. A strategy can be a concrete plan where decisions are made on what to focus and on what to do in what order. When the whole team is involved in clarifying the plan, it brings much energy and through that growth and profitability. The situation may also be that the big investments have been made, for example, in production facilities. Loans have been taken and bank covenants limit what can be done. So the table is not always empty, but corrective actions must be taken within the limits of possibilities. It's also important to consider the culture. It may be that strategy is not followed. The question is, is it even good for that organization then? What would it be like if in six months you had managed to turn growth around? How would it feel if we were on a completely different growth curve? Wouldn't it be valuable to understand the hidden cause and find the right treatments for that change? Next, I will tell you about three cases. Gravicon is an IT company that provides the latest information modeling services for the construction industry. CEO Pauli Jantunen states that although they had a clear picture of what they wanted, it felt challenging to articulate the strategy themselves. There were too many differing opinions within the organization. Discussions had continued for a long time, but the gap to the target state had not disappeared. The hidden cause was, was that there was no internal expertise in strategic thinking to fully utilize all the staff's expertise and thus find a shared vision and way forward. A new path was crystallized when the board's guidelines were clarified and the continuation was considered together with the personnel. Samuel Escola leads Artico Services, a company with over 100 million in revenue. Samuli has significantly changed the 50-year-old company by working through many hidden causes. It was found that the company was quite traditional. Administrative work took too much time. They wanted to increase speed and take more significant steps. A new strategy was created with a broad group, a new organization was established and the entire management system was renewed. Precise intermediate results were set for the big goal. Samuli states, thought patterns have changed a lot. We can now utilize information in real time in management. We have made significant progress. Niklas Head founded Rovio, a gaming company, eventually turning the company into a global success with the software Angry Birds. Niklas states, if you can't summarize the strategy, how can you implement it if the story lives differently within each person? Getting the strategy outlined on one page is 
first of all, very difficult and it involves much work. But if it can be done, achieving the vision becomes much more concrete. How do you act with hidden causes? Here are three blocking beliefs that easily stop the processing of hidden causes. Consider challenging these very common blockers. The first blocking belief to challenge is that we have a good strategy. Of course, this can be the case. But if it is, then the key performance indicators, the KPIs, growth and profitability, are at the desired level. If they are not, the strategy is not good. An experienced board member summarized, a good strategy, customers buy. A bad strategy, customers don't buy. Question, is the reason the company is not flying that the strategy focus does not address the hidden causes? Is there a hidden reason that prevents growth? Maybe management just hasn't seen it clearly or hasn't wanted to work on it for some reason. Or do we have a good strategy that, that doesn't implement well? But is it then a good strategy if it does not fit into the company's culture? What do you think? The second limiting belief is that management believes they can handle the immediate crisis and manage a little longer this way. The situation will change soon. What if it doesn't change? The old story, is there such a rush that you don't have time to get on the bike? The fact is, fact is that time is always the same, it's just how it is used and how the company is managed. There is a school of thought that claims all problems are leadership problems. Are we missing focus? Have we realized the market changed correctly? The third block in belief to challenge is that everyone is so busy. Everybody has their hands full of work. Well, of course, they are full of work. That situation never changes. Wouldn't it, it, wouldn't it be poor management if people aggressively waited for work and customer calls without a 100% workload? Here is a case of an expert organization. Because the numbers were not good, they had to admit that their way of working, that is the strategy, was not good. Management had a great vision of where to go and how the market was developing, but for some reason they couldn't widely get customers involved. They were also in a situation where it was necessary to admit that they could not continue like this, which required the chairman of the board to speak up. It was understood that the company had considerable market potential ahead and a huge potential valuation increase. However, the gap would not close if people did not change their thinking and actions. They had tried it for many years and it was time to act. Everybody had the hands full of work. However, they wanted to invest in the problem and created a very tight new process that does not take much time from operational work. My surprising personal experience is that staff usually don't complain if the strategy is considered together and it takes little time. On the contrary, they are very interested and can find the time to organize their own activities. Some customer meetings overlap with the sessions and then someone missed out. However, since the entire thought process was documented on a digital board, it was also possible to read the thoughts and their priorities afterward. The time spent crystallizing the strategy was 12 hours in short meetings. That is, less than two days. And the strategy became very good and inspiring. But I must admit that a little bit more time could have been used in hindsight. Let's challenge these three blocking beliefs with a few questions. Let's start with the belief that our strategy is good. A good strategy yields good numbers. The question, 
Does your strategy strengthen the, co the competitive advantage? Of course, one would like to answer yes, but is it true? Creating and maintaining a competitive advantage is very challenging. It is the concrete trick that differentiates you from the competitor, specifically in the eyes of the customer. A brilliant strategy systematically builds a competitive advantage, the trick. What do you think? Do you have a competitive advantage? And if so, how does it show in practice? Challenging questions. In many companies, the strategy is a good-looking PowerPoint deck, but it quickly fades into the background. It's not even remembered. When you ask the management team what the strategy is, you quickly get different answers, not to mention the staff. Such a strategy cannot be implemented. The organization continues with, standard, with the standard operational flow, continuously firing fight, firefighting process weaknesses. Make this test. If you cover the logo on your strategy page, could it fit any company? Do the priorities suit anyone, such as committed staff, satisfied customers, sustainable development, or profitable growth? If they suit anyone, you have a so-called hygiene strategy, a self-evident strategy. Then the strategy is about improving everyday operation. It does not practically guide anything other than firefighting. The tail wags the dog. There has been no thought about strengthening the company's competitive advantage, differentiation, and where you want to be in a few years. The hidden cause is not covered. The second question is, are we effectively implementing the strategy? What does your management team think? What does the staff think? What do you think? If you have a hygiene strategy, it, it is pretty easy to answer yes. But if you have a more ambitious strategy that improves your competitive advantage, the answer might be no. Do you systematically follow the progress of your strategy execution? With what metrics? Strategy implementation is an issue that stalls in many organizations. Question. Does the strategy show in concrete actions? As long as there is a gap between strategy and concreteness, the strategy is not implemented and, and is not good. A good strategy is remembered and does not feel like a light upper cloud. Have you heard comments like, our people are so concrete, they are not interested in strategies. Workers are not interested in management nonsense. But is it so? Strategy is a plan for how the payroll capacity continues. You would think such a thing would interest anyone, especially when you can think about how your job is secured and how our team can help customers. Helping people is meaningful. Does your strategy have bo both thought height and concreteness? That is a tricky key question. Well, how has this webinar felt to you so far? Have you received any useful thoughts or insights? If it is okay for you, I will now continue by explaining how we can help you personally with sparring on these key growth obstacles. Here are a few words about Ardigo and our partners. Here are the partners, Staffan, Oscar, Marcus, Erki and Velimatti. Together we have over 150 years of business leadership experience. Our igniting strategy approach, approach emphasizes that strategy involves both design and implementation, igniting a unique competitive advantage. Ardigo, established in 2007, has facilitated over 200 strategy process, 
processes. We have helped clients challenge current thinking, find a winning direction and implement it effectively. We are excited about digital facilitation and have heavily invested in artificial intelligence to find the company's competitive advantage. A marvelous tool. Let's challenge the typical CEO belief that we can manage a little longer like this. Based on our partner's years of experience, I have gathered a set of strong questions that challenge this belief. We could discuss this in our sparring meeting. Moving forward with blinders on is the most dangerous thing. Here's a tricky question. Have we understood the market correctly? When the market logic changes or disrupts, the first signals are weak and you may not react in time. Is new competition emerging? Have customers started behaving differently? Are we repeatedly losing deals? Has new disruptive technology emerged that allows customers to operate more efficiently? What do leading edge customers say? Could someone digitally come between us and the customers? These are questions worth asking yourself. You need to be sensitive and react quickly enough. Many think about strategy once a year, but is that too slow a pace in the current environment? Should we do short checks more often? The most important thing is to avoid getting stuck in old thinking patterns. Blinders must be removed. Question. Is eliminating slow growth a priority? There is an eternal battle between the urgent, urgent and the important. The urgent wins easily. However, a skillful company knows how to balance and implement both. A wise and experienced business leader once said, it is a delicate balance between the short term and the long term. Neither should be forgotten. A third good question is, Will the problem go away over time? Everything is fine if we believe that things will resolve themselves by waiting. This could be, for example, a component supply problem that will be resolved soon. But if there is a risk that something has happened in the market that will prevent growth in the future, it is worth reacting in time. Many successful business leaders say they only regret not making the move earlier. What will others think if you suggest considering the hidden cause of slow growth? What will the chairman of the board say? What will the management team say? What will the staff say? Let's see what kind of questions can challenge business. A fundamental question for the board is whether we are investing in the right things. This always needs to be on the table and the board needs to be alert. If it is noticed that growth is not happening with the current methods, other methods must be considered. The board will be pleased if you bring the matter to the table and want to challenge the current way. Even if a significant IT project is underway, it may not solve this growth problem. It be, may be more a cost-cutting project. Everyone has and will have a lot to do. Additionally, if people didn't have much to do, wouldn't it be poor management? Of course, there must be a lot to do. But if we direct it to even better topics, it will be a joy for everyone. The board should provide guidelines for the strategy and the operational management responsibility is to consider the best way to proceed within that sector. The board's responsibility is to ensure that the company has a winning strategy and that shareholder value increases. When you proactively suggest a review, you are doing the excellent work expected of you. You ask the board to review the guidelines for strategy work at this point. This encourages raising shareholder value. A professional board loves that. A good question is whether the management team sees the need for change. The CEO's job is to motivate the management team to perform excellently. 
it is always easy to say that now is not the right time because of this and this urgent matter. It may also well be that the management team sees the need to consider hidden causes, but some work overload, overload self-defense mechanism says a bit later. They also have their own teams to motivate. You, you can also consider why the management team does not see the need for change despite unsatisfactory growth. Is it embarrassing to admit that the wrong assessment has been made earlier? Or is it that the genuine issue has not been brought to the table that there is some taboo? Is the hidden cause a taboo? It might be acknowledged but cannot be talked about. Is the owner's will clear? The lack of courage can be due to various hidden reasons. Are we spreading our resources too thinly on too many things? Or is it just a matter of misunderstandings? Determine meaning the need for change can be crucial for both the management team and you moving forward. What about the staff? Does the staff see the need for change? If not, what does it tell? I have also noticed that Businessness is very relative. What is busy for one person can be a very relaxed space for another. Busyness is relative to what one is used to. The reasons behind busyness can be many. Are we trying to do too many things after all? The focus is missing. We might not focus on developing the core competitive advantages. Seeing the need for change is a prerequisite. If the need is not seen, no matter how much someone tries to motivate, nothing happens. Much depends on the understanding of frontline managers. Often the staff is more ready for change than the managers. If the company has great growth opportunities, the culture must be developed so that the opportunity can be realized. Sometimes it is simply necessary to admit that a wrong decision has been made earlier. The right answers to these questions hold the keys to a winning game. There were some thoughts. You probably have your questions. So, if it's okay for you, I suggest an hour-long free sparring meeting where my partner or I can share our experience in. We can both learn from it. It's a bit like fitness. When you have raised your fitness level, you can always raise it further. Here are some thoughts on topics for the sparring meeting. The first theme is, of course, the discussion of the hidden causes of slow growth. Here we might give you a fresh perspective, which you could then articulate to the board and management team. Words are still the world's most powerful weapons. The right words make you stop and think. I would happily spar with you on your competitive advantage. A colleague, Marco Virola, conducted a four-year research project on competitive advantage and wrote a book about it. 97% of companies do not have a competitive advantage. People think they have a competitive advantage, but this is not true from the customer's point of view. They imagine something significant is created when we find a few aspects of the competitive advantage, our diamonds, and hone them through strategy. That would be a great topic to discuss, my favorite subject. It is always great to discuss priorities. In practice, companies have one prioritized progression underway, but are there alternatives for prioritizing? the most significant issues. Does the current prioritization address hidden causes? That's a good topic for sparring discussion. This fourth topic is fascinating. How much monetary potential is there in eliminating hidden causes? Let's think. By eliminating the secret cause, could we increase revenue by 1%? How much is that for you? Calculate quickly. If revenue is, for example, 10 million, 1% is 100k. Could we reach 2%? How much is that? What about 5 or 10? 
So with this thought model, I just want to ask you, how much would it be reasonable to invest in the slow growth problem? The investment must return many times over. There is a lot of money in eliminating hidden causes. The fifth topic on the menu could be a short discussion on how to motivate your board or management team. Finding a good phrase or question wording can be very valuable and crucially important. So here are, for example, five topics we could discuss or then entirely according to your own need. This was the webinar today. I hope you have something to think about. If you want to have an hour-long sparring meeting on the hidden cause of slow growth, you can directly make a calendar reservation with our partner or me through the link below. Or you can send an email or just call. Many thanks for watching. Let's boost growth. See you.